Eric, open the door. No, you're not real. How would you know the difference between what's real and what's not? Do you think you know the real, Rachel? <laughs> <gasps> While you were home with Faith, I was at the Foundation merging with Xavier and all the others behind your back. Do you know how thrilling it was connecting with people like that? You've never been able to do that for me. No! Rachel would never say that. <laughs> I can do whatever I want and you would forgive me. Even mutilate myself and take my own eye. And you'd still beg for it like the eager little puppy you are. No! You're wrong! Rachel, she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you tell yourself to make your sad little life feel worthwhile? We have Nils Gron back here, a survivor of Stiladon's tragic mass shooting 15 years ago with their first-hand account of the bizarre events at the shooting's memorial. Yeah, uh, so Carl Johansson, he just came out of nowhere screaming his daughter's name, like he was trying to protect her or something. And my heart stopped. I... I thought it was happening all over again. And now, Carl has disappeared. How does that make you feel? I... I don't know. His intentions didn't seem bad, but that doesn't take away the damage that he and his family have already done. We shouldn't be listening to that. Brit? Brit? Huh? Are you going to help? I'm not handling this all by myself. What do you want to do with those? The photo albums? We should keep them, right? I mean, what if... What if Papa comes back? Every... Everyone hates us! Of course they fucking hate us, Astrid! Look at what our family has done to them! First Ava shooting all those poor people! <sighs> Killing Haugen's six-year-old daughter! Now, Papa, we deserve to be hated. Papa must have never gotten over it. That's not something you get over, Astrid! Ava didn't just murder a bunch of people that day. She killed our family, and any chance any of us had to be happy. It's okay, Rach. But it wasn't her. I had to escape. I could hear her calling for me, crying. Oh, God. Eric, what if I let her die? <laughs> Rachel, look at me. Tell me what happened. You saw Faith? 
She said the purifier sent her to test me to see if I was worthy of being her mother. I guess I wasn't. How do you know it was her? I don't know. It looked like her. It smelled like her. You... You never did want to be a mother. What? I had to convince you to have faith. That's not true. Maybe the purifier is right. Maybe you're not worthy. So what do you want to do? About Faith? No. About us. I don't know what to say, Rachel. Do you still love me? Do you still want to be with me? You cut out your eye right in front of me. Then you just walked out on me. The Foundation. I was reeling. I didn't know what else to do. You need serious help, Rachel. More than I can give you. Don't give up on me. Please. Eric, I still love you. I don't know. I can't just stand around and watch you slowly destroy yourself. You've got to decide whether or not you're stable enough to be in a relationship. I can't do it for you. Where are you going? Back to the Foundation. I'm going to find my daughter. And they're the only ones that can help me. You don't understand. It was rattling. Are you okay? I don't know what just happened. I think we need help, Britt. Help? What do you mean? We've both been fighting our past for a long time. And we keep losing. You know what the real problem is? We keep choking on the past. What do you mean? I'm talking about a spiritual cleaning. To honor everyone we've lost. When did you become religious? I learned it from a healer friend of mine. After a friend overdosed and died. Oh, Britt. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It was a long time ago. Okay. So, what do we do? We burn things. Something of Papa's, something of Mama's, something of Meta's, and something of Orson's. Rick, no. Orson's not. Astrid, we have to find a way to move past all of this. I just... I know. Just think about it, okay? Purifier, cleanse me. My words are woe, my deeds are rot. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You didn't, I just finished. Xavier told me about the merging ceremony. I heard he invited you to be satyr. Who usually goes to those? Just about all of the high-level Foundation members. <sighs> I've never done anything like this before. It's a big deal Xavier offered the satyr to you. That's the part he usually likes to play. Xavier said that bringing the community together through the merging ceremony can be our strongest defense against Blight. I don't know if I'm ready to participate in something like this. You don't have to participate if you don't want. You can just watch. Watch?
time has come for us to merge our souls so that we might shield ourselves against the Withering's Blight. To best magnify the power of our merging, there must be a point of convergence, a nexus for the energy we created, and that is the Seder. I offer myself as the Seder. Join me at the altar and feel the warmth of our love. Now we must take our Seder out to meet the night sky. What is she doing here? I need to talk to Eric. Pay her no mind. Rachel is no longer a part of our foundation. She's a heretic who would see us destroyed by the withering. Daddy! Faith! She's alive? How is it possible? Who are you? What were you doing with my daughter? Please, I'm only trying to help. I'm Nora. I found this little girl wandering alone, and she asked me to bring her here. We must take them both inside, to ensure they are not infected by Blight. Wait! What are you doing? You're not taking my daughter. No! Stay away from me! Honey, what's wrong? I know what you did. You left me behind. Faith, honey, please. I don't want to go with you! The girl is terrified of you, Rachel. We should take her inside and help her calm down. Yeah, you're probably right. Eric! Look at her, Rachel. She's freaking out. What's going on here? Don't worry. We'll explain inside. Rach. We gather here today to remember the people that are no longer beside us. We remember the fullness of their being. We honor the good and the bad. Ingrid, our mama, who was as ferocious as she was protective of this family. For better or for worse, she was a lion. And this scarf was her mane. Our Aunt Meta, as nurturing as she was unyielding, a parent and a friend in equal measure. We offer her nursing cap. Carl, our proud papa, who was as resilient as he was stubborn. He, he wasn't perfect, but he worked hard, and this shirt bears the stains of his sweat. And lastly, a very special little boy. His name was Orson. Orson. 
was a stubborn little man. Just like his grandpa. He always did what he wanted to do. But he was brave, too. Like his aunt Brit. He was resilient and adventurous. And always stood up for what he believed in. I was so proud to be his mother. Let him go. I can't abandon him. He's out there. Astrid, stop. You're just making it worse. This would have been good for you if you had trusted me. I, I can't give up. I know he's out there. I know he's... Orson! Astrid, wh where are you going? No broken bones? Scrapes? Bruises? Are you hungry? Do you need water? Where did you find this? Okay. Okay, Angel. Can you tell me where you've been? Were you in the woods this whole time? Please, Angel. Answer me. Did something bad happen to you? Astrid? I think we should take him to see a doctor. No. He just got here. He's safer with me. But we have to get him checked out. He was gone for so long and there's so much we don't know. He's probably malnourished. Maybe even frostbitten. I said no. I'm his mother and I can take care of my son. Fine. But look at him. He's not speaking. He's barely even moving. What do you think is wrong with him? Angel, what's wrong? See what I mean? What is going on with him? There is nothing wrong with him. He doesn't need to be poked and prodded. I am not going to let you neglect my nephew because you're... I don't even know what your problem is right now. He's going to the hospital if I have to take him myself. Okay, fine. I will take my son to the hospital. Orson, dear, we're going to go on a little ride, okay? But don't worry, I've got you. done to my daughter all I did was bring her back safely she seems afraid of you why did she go running away in the first place we should get everyone inside it isn't safe out here I'm not going anywhere with you and it doesn't look like faith wants to either we just want to make sure you're both fine any injuries that need attending to Rachel faith honey do you want to come with me and daddy inside We've missed you so much. But why? Don't you want us all to be together? What's wrong with her? It's like she's afraid of me. Faith? Don't you want to hug mommy? No, I want daddy! And Miss Nora! It's time to go. Faith can go inside, but I'm going with her. Rachel, you're no longer a member of the Foundation. I don't care. Faith is my daughter. She isn't going anywhere without me. Let's all head inside.
Xavier, what is it? I was just going to the kitchen with Krista and Faith to get her something to eat. And Rachel? I couldn't tell her no. She's Faith's mother. That's a conversation for later. Right now, there's another problem we should discuss. Hello? Is someone out there? Let me out. You locked her up. Shh. We had to be cautious. We know nothing about this woman. She brought Faith back to us. But how do we know she wasn't the person who took her in the first place? Just as the Foundation is here to protect us, there are other nefarious forces working against us. Like what? It's best you don't know. I'd like you to speak with her. Faith has some attachment to this woman. I think she'd be more likely to talk to her father. I'm not sure. Don't you want to know what happened to your daughter? She's been gone all this time and comes back seemingly terrified of her own mother? Yeah. That's not like her. If it was my daughter, I would interrogate this woman until I got every piece of information she had. But I understand if that's not in your nature. Think on it. I apologize for the delay. We've had people coming in with all kinds of strange injuries and we find ourselves a bit short-staffed. He seems healthy, but he's just not responsive to me or anyone. Well, let's have a look. Hey there, Orson. I'm just gonna shine a little light in your eyes, okay? Aurora, did you hear? We found Orson. He's alive. I did hear. I can't wait to come see him. See him? Well, he's being examined now. I understand. But it's the Barnavarnet policy that social workers check on their wards, especially after they've gone missing. Truly, it's just to make sure that he's not suffering from psychological issues that require treatment or stronger measures. Are you talking about taking Orson away? Right after I just got him back? Oh, no, no, dear. I'm just trying to help. If everything is in order, and Orson doesn't pose any threat to himself or others, you'll be fine. How's our usual time and place? Um, sure. That'll be fine. Ah! Orson! Astrid! Orson! Orson, no! I... Ms. Johansson, I can't recommend that you continue overseeing Orson while he's in this state. But... Orson needs to pass his inspection from the Barnavana. I can't recommend exposing him to anyone right now. He needs to be sedated, for your safety as well as his. Drop on the bastard so he can't muck it all up. What? What did you say? I said he needs to be sedated. Maybe if his social worker saw the extent of his needs, they could help. If she doesn't see him, she won't know. If you don't let the proper people help him, then your son may never get better. Fine. But just overnight. your father? No. I doubt they ever will. It was like he really thought Ava was with him. Like he was trying to save her somehow. What happened with him? Right now, I just had to focus on Orson. I was wondering if he was up for visitors. But he must need time to rest. It's probably for the best. He's been... Uh, irritable. He's been through so much. We all have. I... I just wanted to come and say, as a mother who lost a child, it's impossible to face. 
And so your mind dreams up terrible bargains for how to make it untrue. I thought that if I worked or prayed or just remembered hard enough, I could love her back to life. But despite everything, when that miracle does come, even if it's for another mother, to take that pain away for someone, I'm so... So happy that you have your son back, Ostrid. Thank you, Olivia. Really. There's something else. I never got my justice for Asta. Since Ava disappeared after the shooting, I felt like I failed her. As a therapist. That's why I quit and became a police officer. I told everyone it was so I could make sure that wouldn't happen to anyone again. But... That was a lie. It was because I couldn't help your sister, Ava, and I took my failure out on your family instead. And when Orson went missing, I think I let those feelings seep out and affect how I handled his case. Are you saying you sabotaged Orson's investigation because of your grudge? Whether it was conscious or not, I don't know. But I apologize. You, Orson didn't deserve that. No, we didn't. And what? You want me to just let it go? <sighs> There's been so much hate and pain here, Astrid. I'm just trying to find peace. You don't deserve peace. You think an apology is going to make what you did to me go away? You could let the hate live forever if you wanted. Or we could start over. Find forgiveness. A new life. Stay away from my family. Don't ever come near us again. Don't worry. I came by myself. Is this where you offer me my phone call? Or are you just going to skin me alive first? Locking you in here wasn't my idea. But you have to understand how this looks. You showed up out of nowhere with my daughter, who's been missing without a trace for weeks now. No one knows you or where you came from. I'd be stupid if I didn't have some concerns. Fair enough. What do you want to know? How did you find her? She was just wandering around by herself. I asked her where her parents were. She took my hand and started guiding me. I won't lie and say it didn't freak me out a little, but I couldn't just leave her. And why are you here? In Hope's Junction? It's a small town, and I've never seen you before. I used to live here, okay? But I saw the writing on the wall and got the hell out a long time ago. Then why did you come back? I got a letter from my brother begging me to come. Only he's dead. He died the year after I moved away. At first, I thought it was a sick joke. But the writer mentioned things. Things only somebody close to my brother would know. When did you receive it? A week ago. The next day, I packed up my car and headed back to this hellhole. As soon as I got within city limits, all I could see was fog. Crashed my car in a ditch. When I got out to look for help, I found your daughter. And she led me here. Where exactly did- Look, I've answered enough questions. Tell your friends to let me out of here so I can keep searching. I wish it was up to me. But it isn't. Wait! Please! <laughs> 